Hi, my name is Ann Wolf. I'm a pediatric physical therapist at Emerge Pediatric Therapy, and I'm part of our infant development team. Today, we are gonna talk through the evaluation process if your child needs a cranial remodeling orthosis or a cranial remodeling helmet. We are gonna talk through the steps for evaluation within our clinic and then how we can support your family if a cranial remodeling orthosis is needed and kind of how we can get you to the right place. So the first thing we can talk about is why would your child need a cranial remodeling orthosis or a helmet? The most common reason for a helmet is due to a flat spot on the skull. The medical term for that is plagiocephaly. So if your child has a flat spot, that may be a reason to receive a cranial remodeling orthosis. Um, the most common reasons that we see in our clinic for a child having a flat spot are related to either intruder and positioning. Sometimes if baby is positioned up against a pelvis or a rib for a prolonged period of time, that can cause flattening of the skull. We also see it with children that have either a diagnosis of torticollis or potentially just a generalized body tension. Um, that can cause baby to stay in certain positions more often and that can lead to flattening of the skull. The other thing that can sometimes lead to flattening of the skull is a gross motor delay. So for instance, if your child has a hard time learning skills for rolling or learning to sit, having them be lying down more often can lead to flattening of the skull. And it can be hard to give your child lots of different kind of positions if they're having a hard time learning new skills. So when we see you in our clinic, you would come in for an evaluation. The steps to our evaluation would include a check of range of motion. So we would look at range of motion of the full body. So we would look at their neck, we would look at their trunk, we would check their arms and legs, we would make sure that it, they don't seem to have any tension anywhere. For a baby that does have tension or maybe a diagnosis of torticollis, we would be specifically looking um, at how they do head turns, how their trunk moves, um, what the lateral flexion of their neck looks like. And we would use all that information to help guide us in our treatment. So we would be looking for range of motion. We would also be looking at strength. So how strong are their muscles? Often it feels like babies aren't gonna be very strong or you don't anticipate that they have lots of strength in their muscles, but they actually, there are many, many movements that they're able to do. So we wanna kind of maximize what they can do. And we wanna be able to show that to you too, so that you can help support them at home. So we would look at range of motion, we would look at strength, and then we would do kind of a full developmental assessment. So we would see what gross motor skills they currently are doing well, what skills are emerging, and what skills they would need to be on track to meet in kind of whatever period of time makes sense for the child's age when they come to us for the evaluation. After doing those things, we would also do cranial measurements. So we'd be measuring um, a couple different specific measurements of their skull so that we could help determine what the severity of the flatness is. So we use a specific measurement called a cranial vault asymmetry index, CVAI. That number gives us a severity. We then use kind of the gold standard of CVAI is from the Children's Hospital of Atlanta. That breaks it down into categories. So based on what category you fall into, that tells us kind of how to guide our treatment. So for mild or for insignificant flattening, because some degree of flattening can be within the normal range, um, there might not be a need for a helmet right away. Maybe it's that we need to monitor them and we need to start PT so that we can start getting them into different positions and help work through either tightness or deficits in strength or help improve their gross motor skills so that the flatness can improve on its own. That is sometimes an option for some babies. For others, they will need a cranial remodeling orthosis to help reduce the pressure on the spot that is flat and allow them to grow into that space. The goal of a cranial remodeling orthosis is that it is worn up to 23 hours a day, every day um, with an hour off period, and that that helps to distribute the pressure more evenly across the back of their skull so that they are able to kind of grow into that flattened area. For many children that receive a cranial remodeling orthosis, we continue to work with them and kind of partner with them in that time to continue to develop all of the skills needed to improve whatever the underlying reason was for why they got the flat spot initially. So the helmet will help with the flat spot, but we need to figure out what caused it and then help treat that. So sometimes that is the gross motor delay. Sometimes that's body tension or torticollis, but we would still walk alongside you through treatment while you're in the helmet to improve whatever the underlying skills are that need to be there for continued gross motor development.
also at that evaluation, we can tell you this is your severity category and this is what we should do. So again, for some children, that means just PT. Maybe they need a positioning program. Maybe they need some exercises to work on. Maybe they will continue to do weekly PT in addition to home programming. For, ch for children that do need a cranial remodeling orthosis, we would move forward with a referral process for you. So we work with multiple providers of helmets kind of in the Durham, Chapel Hill, and Carborough areas. And based on your insurance and the severity, we could talk you through your different options and help refer you to the right place. We can then work with whichever company we determine to be the best fit for you. We can work with them. We would be able to see the reports that they're writing so that we can see kind of how they're determining your severity as well. And we can continue to work with you throughout the helmet process. If you're curious what kind of the treatment would look like and what week to week sessions might look like, stay tuned for our talk next week. I'm gonna go into more detail on what treatment sessions might look like after the evaluation is completed for an infant that received a helmet. Um, if you would like to get started with us at Emerge, you can fill out our initial inquiry form. It's on our website. Feel free to leave a comment if you have a child that's in a helmet or if you're going through this process, um, we would love to hear from you. We hope you have a great day. Thanks.